In this video, I'm going to grade every first overall pick in NBA history. Unlike my NFL video, I'm going to evaluate the player's entire career, not just how they did with the team that drafted them. So strap in and hold on to your nuts and butts. Let's go. 1950, Chuck Scher. A good role player on some great Hawks teams in the late 50s. He won a ring in 1958, but he was never a star. Grade C. 1951, Gene Melchior. Never played a single minute in the NBA. Grade F. 1952, Mark Workman. Played in just 79 career games, shot 33%, and averaged just 4.9 points per game. Grade F. 1953, Ernie Beck. Won a ring in 1956, but averaged just 6.3 points per game for his career, and was never close to being a star. Grade D. 1954, Frank Selby. A two-time All-Star who was a solid player, but was never a star, and was drafted one spot ahead of Hall of Famer. Bob Pettit. Tough scene. Grade C. 1955. Dick Ricketts. Shot under 33% for his career, which lasted just three seasons for three different teams. A bust. Grade F. 1956. Cy Green. Played for four teams in nine years and was never more than a role player. He did serve in the military though, so you better fucking respect him. Grade D+. 1957. Hot Rod Hundley. He made two all-star teams, but he shot just 35% for his career and averaged just 8.4 points per game. Grade D+. 1958, Elgin Baylor. He never won a ring, but he was an 11-time All-Star, 10-time All-NBA, and averaged 27-14-4 and in the regular season, and 27-13-4 and in the postseason. An absolute baller and legend. Grade A+. 1959, Bob Boozer. A one-time All-Star and 1971 NBA champion. He averaged a respectable 15 points per game and 8 rebounds per game in his career. He was a good player, but not a great one. Grade C+. 1960, Oscar Robertson. One of the best point guards of all time, a 1971 NBA champion, 12-time All-Star, 11-time All-NBA, and the 1964 League MVP. His numbers still hold up amazingly well today. Grade A+. 1961, Walt Bellamy. A Hall of Famer who made four All-Star games, but strangely, his numbers got worse every year of his career following his legendary rookie season. He still finished with career averages of 20 points, 14 rebounds, and 2 assists. Grade B. 1962, Bill McGill. A strange career. He only appeared in 150 58 NBA games with pedestrian averages of 10, 4, and 1, but he has very good advanced metrics. Grade D-. 1963, Art Heyman. Much like McGill, Heyman only played in 147 NBA games. He did make the all-rookie team, but he had pedestrian career averages of 10 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists per game. Grade D-. 1964, Jim Barnes. He won a ring in 1969 and made the all-rookie team in 1965, but he was mostly a bit player who finished his career averaging just 8.8 .8 points per game and 6 5 rebounds per game. Grade D. 1965, Fred Hetzel. He made the all-rookie team in 1966, but that's about it. He was a career-long role player who finished averaging 11.2 points per game. Grade D. 1966, Cassie Russell. A one-time All-Star and 1970 NBA champion. He had a couple of 20 points per game seasons with Golden State, but for the most part was a second or third option. Grade C+. 1967, Jimmy Walk. A two-time All-Star who was known for being Jalen Rose's father. A talented scorer on mostly bad teams, but not much more than that. Grade C-. 1968, Elvin Hayes. A Hall of Famer, 12-time All-Star, 6-time All-NBA, 1978 NBA champ. Finished his career with over 27,000 points and 16,000 rebounds. Known for being a bit high maintenance and selfish though. Grade A. 1969, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The NBA's all-time leading scorer and a top three player of all time. What fucking more do you need to know? Grade A+. 1970, Bob Lanier. A Hall of Famer and a Absurdly underrated eight-time All-Star who finished with impressive career averages of 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists. He's rarely brought up when discussing great big men because he spent most of his prime on mediocre Detroit squads. Grade A. 1971, Austin Carr. A one-time All-Star and beloved by Cleveland, but never quite lived up to the massive hype he had coming out of Notre Dame. Grade C. 1972, LaRue Martin. Played just four years and finished with career averages of 5.3 points per game and 4.6 rebounds per game. One of the biggest busts in NBA history. Grade F. 1973, Doug Collins. Known more as a coach and broadcaster, but he was a four-time All-Star player before injuries. Averaged a respectable 18 points, three rebounds, and three assists for his career. Grade B-. 1974, Bill Walton. He never came close to reaching his enormous 
potential due to an ungodly amount of injuries, but he is still in the Hall of Fame for winning two titles, a Finals MVP, and the 1978 NBA League MVP. Grade A-. 1975, David Thompson, a Hall of Famer, an athletic freak, and ultra-talented guard whose career was cut short due to drug addiction and injuries. He still finished with a stellar career 22.1 points per game, but he could have been so much more if he had stayed clean. Grade B-. 1976, John Lucas, another talented guard who never reached his full potential due to drug addiction, but still lasted 14 years in the league and finished with 6,454 career assists, good for 28th all-time. Grade C. 1977, Kent Benson, averaged just 9.1 points per game and 5.7 rebounds per game in a disappointing journeyman career, most known for getting punched in the face by Kareem in his first career game. Grade D-. 1978, Michael Thompson, Clay's dad won two titles with the Lakers in the late 80s and had some good seasons with Portland, but never became a superstar and was drafted five spots ahead of Larry Bird. Ouch. Grade C+. 1979, Magic Johnson, the greatest point guard of all time and a top five player in NBA history. The worst tweeter imaginable though. Grade A+. 1980, Joe Barry Carroll. He made one All-Star game and averaged 20 points four times, but he was known more for his lack of passion and being aloof, a massive underachiever. Grade C. 1981, Mark Aguirre. A three-time All-Star and two-time NBA champ with the Bad Boy Pistons, he was one of the best scorers in the league with Dallas during his peak years. He finished his career with averages of 20 points per game, five rebounds per game, and three assists per game. Picked one spot ahead of Isaiah Thomas. Grade B. 1982, James Worthy. A three-time NBA champion with the Showtime Lakers, who made seven All-Star games and two All-NBA teams. One Finals MVP in 1988 to help legitimize his Big Game James nickname after an amazing performance in Game 7. Grade A. 1983, Ralph Sampson. He made the Hall of Fame, but his NBA career was undoubtedly a disappointment due to injuries. A four-time All-Star who won Rookie of the Year in 1984 and made All-NBA in 1985. He could have been a legendary duo with Akeem Olajuwon had he stayed healthy, as evidenced by their run to the 1986 Finals together. Grade C+. 1984, Four, Hakeem Olajuwon. To sum up how great Hakeem was, the Rockets drafted him over Michael Jordan and nobody gives them shit for it. Grade A+. 1985, Patrick Ewing. Was billed as the next Bill Russell and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar coming out of Georgetown. He never reached that level, but he's still one of the best big men who ever played and made 11 All-Star games and 7 All-NBA teams. However, his career will always be tainted by never winning a ring and his drop-in performance in the playoffs. Grade A. 1986, Brad Doherty. A smooth and ultra-talented big man offensively, made five All-Star games and the 1992 All-NBA team, but his career was cut short by injuries. He still finished his career with very good averages of 19 points, 10 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. Grade B. 1987, David Robinson, a troop who dominated the NBA. Does it get any better than that, folks? I don't think so. The Admiral made 10 All-Star games, 10 All-NBA teams, and one 1995 MVP. He was a top five player in the league for the better part of a decade. His only Achilles heel was his dip in playoff performance before Tim Duncan arrived to help him win two rings in the twilight of his career. Still an absolute legend. Grade A+. 1988, Danny Manning. He dealt with injuries throughout his career, but was still talented enough to make two All-Star games in the early 90s. The fact that he was drafted to the Clippers and didn't become a bust proves he was good. Grade C+. 1989, Purvis Ellison. Out of service, Purvis was known more for being injured in the NBA than his play on the court. Although he did have talent, as the 1992 season showed when he averaged 20-11-3 and won one most improved player. However, that season was the exception and not the norm. Grade D. 1990, Derek Coleman. One of the biggest wastes of talent in NBA history. He had the ability to become an inner circle legendary type of player, but instead settled for just one All-Star game and two All-NBA teams. The 1991 Rookie of the Year finished with good career averages of 17 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists per game, but he should have been so much more. Grade C. 1991, Larry Johnson. Made two All-Star games and All-NBA in 1993. Was an up-and-coming star in Charlotte before back injuries reduced him to more of a role player with the Knicks. Finished his career averaging 16 points eight rebounds and three assists per game. Grade C+. 1992, Shaquille O'Neal. 15 All-Star games, 14-time All-NBA, a four-time champ, a three-time Finals MVP, and 2,000 league MVP. Shaq is a top 10 player in NBA history who still didn't live up to his potential. Think about how scary that is. Grade A+. 1993,
Chris Webber. Webber was a great player, but he was injury prone and known for choking. Nevertheless, he is now deservedly in the Hall of Fame after averaging a stellar 21 points, 10 rebounds, and 4 assists per game for his career, which saw him make 5 All-Star games and 5 All-NBA teams. Grade A-. 1994, Glenn Robinson. Big Dog made 2 All-Star games and could flat out score, but that's about all he could do. He was a good player, but never justified being the first overall pick, especially in a year with Jason Kidd and Grant Hill in it. Grade C+. 1995, Joe Smith. Average in both name and game. Joe Smith played for 12 different teams in his 16-year NBA career. He wasn't a bad player, but not even close to a star. And the fact that Kevin Garnett was picked just four spots after him doesn't help. Grade C-. 1996, Allen Iverson. The tiny Hall of Famer made 11 All-Star games, 7 All-NBA teams, had 4 scoring titles, and won 2001 MVP. But he never came close to winning anything outside of 2001, and was terribly inefficient. His massive cultural impact has also forced people to overrate his on-court play. Still, he was a blast to watch. Grade A. 1997, Tim Duncan. A Hall of Famer. 15 All-Star games, 15 All-NBA teams, 15 All-Defensive teams, 5 titles, 3 Finals MVPs, 2 League MVPs. Pretty fucking good. Grade A+. 1998, Michael Olawakandi. A colossal bust, no offense to Pam Anderson, who averaged just 8.3 points per game and 6.8 rebounds per game on a woeful 43.5% field goal in his career. Grade F. 1999, Elton Brand. Made two All-Star games and an All-NBA team in 2006. Was extremely underrated in the early part of his career, averaging 20 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists with 2 blocks per game over the first 8 years of his career before becoming a role player. Grade B-. 2000, Kenyon Martin. A good, high-energy player who made an All-Star game in 2004, but was never close to becoming a superstar. Luckily for him, the 2000 draft was historically awful, so he wasn't picked before any legendary players. Grade C-. 2001, Kwame Brown. If he was drafted late in the first round, he would be lauded for having a solid career, but for the first overall pick, her averages of 6.6 .6 points per game and 5.5 rebounds per game just don't get it done. A major bust. Grade F. 2002, Yao Ming. A very good player whose career was cut short, made eight All-Star games, some due to fan support, and five All-NBA teams, averaged 19 points per game, 9.2 rebounds per game, and two blocks per game for his career. Grade B-. 2003, LeBron James, the best basketball player of all time. Grade A+. 2004, Dwight Howard, made eight All-Star games, eight All-NBA teams, won three Defensive Player of the Years, and a championship in 2020. He could have been a little better if he had a different attitude, and he became a dirty man later on in his career, but he was one of the top five or so players in the league for a good four to five years. Grade A. 2005, Andrew Bogut. An odd career, not a bust, but never a star either. He made All-NBA in 2010 and won a ring in 2015. He averaged just 10 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 assists with great defense for his career, but he was certainly never as good as Chris Paul, who went just 3 picks after him in 2005. Grade C+. 2006, Andrea Bargnani. An aloof clown who could score and shoot a little bit, but provided literally nothing else of value. Grade D. 2007, Greg Oden. He had talent and ability to become a good NBA player, but he never had a chance due to massive amounts of injuries. Grade F. 2008, Derrick Rose. Most known for, wrongly, winning MVP in 2011, he made three All-Star games and was a joy to watch before injuries sapped him of his prime years. He still carved out a good career, but he will always be one of the biggest what-ifs in NBA history. Grade B-. 2009, Blake Griffin. A high flyer who made six All-Star games and five All-NBA teams. He looked like he could potentially be an all-time great during his rookie year. He never quite became that, but he was still very good. Grade B. 2010, John Wall. He made five All-Star games and a 2017 All-NBA team. He has great career averages of 19 points per game and nine assists per game, but his teams have never come close to winning anything, and his efficiency has always left a lot to be desired. A good player, but not a superstar. Grade B-. 2011, Kyrie Irving. He is a weirdo, but he's a weirdo with seven All-Star games, three All-NBA teams, and arguably the biggest shot in NBA history on his resume. He still never won anything without LeBron, and he's a bit of a team cancer, but his talent is off the charts. Grade B-. 2012, Anthony Davis. An eight-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA, 2020 NBA champion. He can be frustrating to watch due to his inconsistent motor, but with career averages of 24-10-2 in the regular season, and 27-10-3 in the postseason, his greatness is not debatable. Grade A. 2013, Anthony Bennett. Averaged just 4.4 points per game on 39% shooting in a little over four seasons. Arguably the biggest draft bust in sports history. Grade F. 2014, Andrew Wiggins. A mercurial player who has never lived up to the immense hype he had coming into the league with Minnesota, but he finally seems to have found a home in Golden State as a role player. Grade D. 2015, Carl Anthony Towns. He's made two 
All-Star games and an All-NBA team in 2018. Not much of a defender, but offensively can fill it up. He averages a stellar 23 points, 12 rebounds, and 3 assists for his career. The only thing missing for him is postseason success. Grade B-. 2016 Ben Simmons Has become a meme for his penchant of passing up shots and unwillingness to improve since his rookie year. But even if he is a disappointment, he's still a good player with lots of value defensively. Grade C+. 2017 Markel Fultz It's been a mysterious and injury-filled career thus far for Fultz, and quite honestly, I'm done giving him leeway. Even when he has played, he hasn't shown anything resembling a superstar or a player worthy of going first overall. Grade F. 2018 DeAndre Ayton He'll never be as good as Luka Doncic, who went two picks after him, but he's a legit big man with incredible touch around the basket and good rebounding skills. A good, not great player. Grade B-. 2019 Zion Williamson A prodigious talent who is getting uncomfortably close to letting food ruin his unstoppable potential. Yes, that's a real sentence I just said. He's only played in 85 games thus far, but in those games, he's averaged an outstanding 26 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists on an incredible 60% shooting. If he stays in shape, he will be a legendary player. That's a major if, though. Grade A-. 2020, Anthony Edwards. I love Ant's personality, and he's fun to watch, but his efficiency still leaves a lot to be desired and could hold him back from becoming a superstar. I hope he and Minnesota keep improving together because he's such a likable guy. Grade incomplete. 2021, Cade Cunningham. It's way too early to make any claims about the talented young Piston, but it's a good sign for his future that he's already bounced back from a very rough first couple games to produce solid, prolonged stretches of play. I'm excited about his future. Grade incomplete. 